Have you ever tried to catch that will-o'-the-wisp of something else? Which still dances in the background of your feelings at the end of all accomplished desires? Analyze it. You hanker after something as long as you are not able to get it. But when it is secured, sooner or later, you tire of it and want something else. Even if life gave you, at one time, everything you wanted, wealth, power, friends, after a while, you would again become dissatisfied and need something more. But there is one thing that can never become stale to you. Joy itself. Finding the Joy in Life Extracts from Lectures by Paramahansa Yogananda, circa 1936. In all your seeking among different things, directly or indirectly, you are in reality seeking happiness through the fulfillment of your desires. You do not want those things that bring sorrow. Neither do you want those that provide a little pleasure in the beginning, but sink you deep in remorse and suffering in the end. No matter what your goal, you seek it with eagerness, in expectation of fulfillment by possessing it and you ought to feel joyous when you actually get it. Then why not seek joy directly? Why seek it through the intermediary of material pleasures and objects? When you supplicate the favor of short-lasting material things, your happiness depends on their short-lasting pleasures. Material objects and the satisfaction of material desires are temporal. Therefore, all happiness deriving from them is temporal. Eating, smelling fragrances, listening to music, beholding beautiful objects, touching pleasing things. These are evanescent pleasures, lasting only as long as the sensations of tasting, smelling, hearing, seeing, and touching last, or until the mind becomes bored with the sensation and is tempted by a new stimulus. You do not want a transitory joy that leaves sorrow in its trail when it vanishes. You crave joy that is not merely tantalizing, disappearing like the sudden flicker of gossamer wings beneath a flash of lightning. You should look for joy that will shine forever steadily, like the ever-luminous radium. Yet you do not want enjoyment that has too much sameness. You want a joy that changes and dances, enthralling your mind in many ways, keeping your attention perpetually occupied and interested.
happiness that comes by fits and starts is only tantalizing. Pleasures that become monotonous are tiresome. Mirth that lasts just a little while and brings sorrow in the end is undesirable. Joy that comes momentarily and then flits away, sinking you in a state of deepening indifference by contrast, is torturing. Joy that rhythmically changes all the time and yet in itself remains unchangeable, like an actor who entertains the different roles and poses, is what all of us are seeking. Such joy can be found only through regular, deep meditation. The inner fountain of unchangeable, ever new joy alone can quench our thirst. By its very nature, this divine bliss is the only enchantment that can never tire the mind or make us want to exchange it for something else. In the pursuit of evil or of good, it is happiness you are always seeking. The former promises happiness and gives sorrow. The latter may seem to offer sorrow, but it's requisite of discipline and willpower, but will surely give lasting joy in the end. God is everlasting, ever new joy. And when you have found him, you need no longer pursue the eternally elusive will-o'-the-wisp something else that has always eluded you in all fulfilled desires. God is that something else. Finding him, you will need seek no further. In ever new joy, you will have everything you ever sought. Material objects that give pleasure remain outside the mind. They, and the gratification they give, gain entry into the mind only through imagination. Joy, by its very nature, being the blissful consciousness of spirit in man's soul, lives closest to the mind and is born in it when the mind is inwardly tuned. When external objects of sense pleasure are destroyed, the happiness they give is destroyed with them. But the ever-new joy of God inherent in the soul is indestructible. So also, its expression in the mind can never be destroyed if one knows how to hold on to it. And if he does not deliberately change his mind, he too will become sorrowful by nurturing moods. So do not seek fulfillment through material mediums or through desires born of such contact. Seek the unconditioned, indestructible, pure bliss within yourself, and you will have found the ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new joy, God. Unlike material pleasures, this joy is not an abstract quality of mind. It is the conscious, 
self-born, self-expressing quality of spirit. Seek it and be comforted forever. When you have attained this ever new joy, you will never become a cynic, hating the world and condemning its human inhabitants. Rather, you will then be in a position to appreciate God's creation rightly. As his immortal child, you are supposed to enjoy the good and the beauty of his handiwork with the lasting blissful attitude of your eternal nature which is perpetual joy. But people who delight in material things without knowing their superlative inner joy of God become materialistically minded. It is a disgrace to behave like a disconnected mortal, chasing one desire after another. When you are made in God's immortal image of all desire quenching ever new joy, when immortals behave like mortals, they experience the alterations of pleasure, sorrow, and indifference in their natures. That is why you must destroy this changeable nature grafted to your unchangeable immortal nature. When you have found your true soul nature of everlasting joy, that indestructible bliss will remain with you throughout all experiences of life. Whether they be pleasant or disagreeable, your joy will stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking earthly pleasures. You will enjoy everything with the joy that is God. Unattracted to the sensory world, the yogi experiences the ever new joy inherent in the self, engaged in divine union of the soul with spirit. He attains bliss indestructible. Excerpts from the book the Divine Romance by Paramahansa Yogananda. <laughs>